Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy XIV. In this video, as you can see, I'm a level 53 goldsmith. So we're going to be going through the 1 through 50 job quests for goldsmith. So, uh, you know how it goes. You know how this video is going to play out, so I hope you enjoy it. And I will see you in just a little bit. Alright. Time to become a goldsmith. Good morrow to you, adventurer, and welcome to the Goldsmiths Guild. Have you come to observe our artisan's work? Indeed, it is a marvel to which Matt Goldsmiths must transform raw materials and uncut gem zones into sparkling rings, earrings, and necklaces, some of which possess magical properties no less. You know, if you'd like to try your hand at goldsmithing, the guild is open to adventurers like yourself. No prior experience is needed. For all we, for all we te need teach, for we, <coughs> let me try it again. For we teach all you need to know about the craft. Would you be interested? Yes! If it pleases me greatly to hear you say so. As for the first step, I would have you understand the purpose of our guild. The vast mineral resources of Thanalan have given rise to a grand goldsmithing tradition, which has been refined through the ages. Our techniques are renowned across the realm, our creations held in the highest regard. However, we have Estame's lapidaries. The, primer, the premier source of Uldan jewelry were not content to rest with our, on our laurels. Seeking to advance our craft, we turn our eyes to the east, the only place in the, in the known world where whose goldsmithing was said to rival our own. We built the finest fast facilities to beckon their ma masters hither and blended their foreign techniques with ours. Our guild quickly became the center of Eorzean goldsmithing. Aye, here you will benefit from the refined wisdom of countless veteran craftsmen. You'll learn to see the potential in your materials as well, and shape their, them to your will. These are essential skills for goldsmithing, for a goldsmith must hone his eyes to identify and apprise all matter materials and, when needs be, recognize imitations for what they are. It is in said that a master goldsmith can ascertain the authenticity of a man himself. He may one day come to possess such vision, but even the most magnificent jewel begins life as a rough, hewn stone. Must first cut and be, be cut and polished before it can delight the eyes of its with its brilliance. If you would become a goldsmith, you must needs refine yourself as you would a gemstone. It will take much time and effort, but there is no guarantee of success. <clears throat> Should you be certain that this li the life that you seek, speak to me once more. Yes. You shall find Mistress Serendipity on the workshop floor, just down the steps. Show her your burning desire to learn, and you are certain to receive her permission to join. Stop right there, you little troublemaker! People are working here! Oh, pardon me, I had you mistaken for a mammoth. For a mammoth there. You know, a mammoth? Well, thanks, I feel so offended right now. Let's start over, huh, shall we? What brings you here today, adventure? Do you have perchance have aspirations to become a goldsmith? Yes, I do. Really? That's great! Welcome, welcome! I'm Serendipity, but you can call me Sarah. <clears throat> or is that too informal? I'm s sorry, I'm still unaccustomed to this whole guildmaster business. All oh, right. What'd you say your name was again? Adrian? That's not even close. All oh, right, Cecil Rye. Well then, Cecil Rye. Work hard and one day your creations may line the shelves of Estame's aesthetics. <coughs> trust in yourself and you can achieve anything. That was sufficiently inspiring, I trust. Good. Next order of business, business here is to take this, your new chaser hammer. Well, I say new, but it's actually a bit weathered. Have you? But, but you never had my. But you never you mind that. Just show me that you know how to wield it, so we can get started. All right. That's not my task. Uh, where is it? There's so many damn hammers. All right. New gear set. I should probably, since I can repair my stuff. Oh, that's right. I still need to buy freaking dark matter. Keep forgetting to do that. <clears throat> Great, let's get started. Though, to be honest, I'd swear you'd done this before, by the way. You wear the hammer on your hip. 
Mind you, if you do have some experience with a responsible guildmaster, must ensure that her charges are for the have a firm grasp of the fundamentals. Therefore, I command you to crack me a copper ingot. It's simple, really. All you need is copper ore and a wind shard. Our guild supplier, Aston, will can supply you with copper ore. And I gave you a few wind shards along with your hammer. At least I think I did. If it turns out you don't have any, you'll need to find get some yourself. This is exciting, Cecilia. Your first challenge as a guild as a member of the guildsmith as a guildsmith's guild. Show me the ingot when you're done. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna get to level five. You know how this works, and then uh, I will be right back. <coughs> Oh, did you forget? Okay, here you go. Hmm, you know, I think this is quite... Okay. Oh, Automata found sounds. Utter garbage is the worst. Not even fit for making a chamber pot. Quiet, GG. I'm the guildmaster. I get to decide what's fit for a chamber pot. <clears throat> Please excuse me. I keep getting a bit overzealous at times. GG is my assistant, but he has a habit of butting in with my opinions. Most mammoths are rather simple, capable of only more, no more than rudimentary speech. They can be relied upon for menial tasks, but little, e but little ease. GG, on the other hand, is quite intelligent and quite stubborn, I might add. I suspect that's due to his age. He's been with the guild for an eternity, ever attending each guildmaster, but recently he's been coming and going as he pleases. Kneel before Gigi, the one true guildmaster. Respect my authority, important mortal, or suffer my wrath. It's like this every day, Cecla. I'm afraid the experience he's accumulated over a century of assisting the guildmasters has made him arrogant. It's quite intimidating, really. I may be the guildmaster, but he's like a walking, talking archive of all knowledge to do our, to do with our craft. Oh, I completely forgot about your ingot. Sorry, sorry. As I was about to say, this I think this is a very, very good for a beginner. It's, re per it's reasonably pure and well-formed. I dare say you've got a knack for this, Cecil. What you need now is practice. So, keep practicing through your hammer and come back when you've gotten more comfortable using it. Bugger off, Greenhorn! Yeesh. An annoying little mammoth. I'll use you, I'll strip you for parts! Oh, Cecil, I'm honestly a bit surprised to see you. Newcomers find Gigi's evaluation so hard that we never hear from them again. I'm so glad you didn't take him seriously when he said your copper w wasn't fit for a chamber pot. I mean, really, he d d it doesn't even make sense. You can make a chamber pot out of anything. Anyway, I hope you've been working hard because your next task won't be as nearly as easy as the last. Listen well, Cecil. I want you to make me three copper gorgets. For this, you'll need co you need copper ingots, which you are which you very conveniently learned to make last time. Now, I directed you to purchase purchase ore from Aston before, but there are other ways to obtain it. You could dig it up yourself, or perhaps befriend a lonely lonely miner and convince him to share some with you. However, you choose to obtain your materials. I'm sure that you'll put them to good use. Okay, copper gorgets. So I just need leather. So I'll buy from you. Get these nice and crafted. Nice. All right, here you go. Hmm. Well, in my opinion, gorgets. Your gorgets are gr gorgeous, Greenhorn. Oh wait, I mean gr grotesque, ungodly. An affront to the gods themselves for shame. Beg your pardon, Cecil. I'm afraid that constructive criticism is one of Gigi's strong points. But where was I? 
Ah oh, yes, your gorkrits are well made, strong and functional, and that's, la and that's the least they should be, as they are meant to protect one's throat. When it comes to basic pieces like these, we don't have much creative freedom. Still, it does. Still, this doesn't mean we should put our less effort, especially since the techniques we use to craft simple accessories are the same ones we use to craft elaborate ones. Now then, you've learned how to handle your hammer, but there's another tool we'd, I'd like you to get acquainted with. With this grinding wheel, you'll find it easy to add the, the finishing touches when you craft. Try using it and you'll see what I mean. Keep your nose to the gr grinding wheel and you'll be ready for your next challenge in no time. Thanks. I'll take that and be on my way. Alright. That is a level 1 to 5 quest, so I'll be back when we're level 50 so we can uh, do the usual thing. All right, we are level 50. So, uh, let's dive on into this, shall we? Oh. I'm so sorry, sir. Please don't... Oh, it's only you, Cecilia. For a moment there, I thought my heart was about to fail me. I thought the anger, angry miner had returned. Gigi was pleased with the order the miner brought in, you see, and he made the se his sentiment clear in the only way he knows how. There was mention of the miner's mother and an owl goat. <clears throat> Never mind all that. I have an urgent task for you. We've just received an order for a prodigious quantity of copper rings, and I'd like you to handle it. Now, this is an honest to God's commission, Cecil. You'll have to satisfy a paying customer, not your not your kind and lovely guildmaster. But I believe that you can do more than sa simply satisfy. Now, the customer is waiting, so you'd best get started on those copper rings. When they're ready, come show me them, and just for good measure. Got them. Where are my rings at? There they are. Copper rings. Eh, I've seen worse. Oh, GG, you must always be so... Wait a minute. Did you just say you've seen worse? Says that's, like that's as good as a compliment you're coming from him. Really? I don't know about that. I mean, when you consider what a scathing critic he usually is, perhaps the fact he's not saying anything more insulting is a sign he likes it? After all, he's called your previous work utter garbage and an affront to the gods themselves. I have expected him to call these rings abysmal failures. Oh, I probably shouldn't take this opportunity to teach you a thing or two about what, made, what, about what you made. Copper rings are... Uh, rings made out of copper. Oh, thanks. I, I f kind of figured that. That's a great explanation, thanks. It can be used to make chains and uh, chain mail. He probably knew all that, obviously. <laughs> I mean, he didn't have to explain it. Anyway, says so I would like you to deliver these rings to the client personally. I would handle it myself, but I, I believe it's very important that you learn how to deal with customers firsthand. The client is a sultan sworn named Robert, who should be waiting outside the guild right about now. I told him we could wait outside, but he said he didn't want to distract the goldsmiths of their work. Nothing I would mind a distraction like that. Oh, I see you don't want to do it. You got a thing for this Sultan Sworn. You're a goldsmith, aren't you? Did Mr. Serendipity send you? Ah, uh, yeah, Cecil shall serve nicely. Keeping the Sultana from harm is, perilous, is a perilous business, you see, and we Sultan Sworn can never have enough supplies to keep our equipment in serviceable condition. You may inform Serendipity that you can expect full payment soon. And I sent her my ma my fondest regards. Oh, I see what's going on between these two. How did it go, Sessa? What do you say about me? I mean, about your work. Oh. <clears throat> anyway, seeing how well your very first commission went, I hope I have high hopes for, you, for those to come. In fact, why don't you speak with Yusuf down at the quicksand and see what work is available for the gold for a goldsmith? Yes, I believe. You're quite ready to handle commissions, independent of my supervision. Take yourself to the Adventurer's Guild to, and try taking on a task or two. Alright. I won't do that, but thanks. I was assisting one of my goldsmiths when you reached out and grabbed it without warning. Then he has the gall to say that my bottom lacks sufficient shape and tone. I was so violated and insulted. I'm glad Robert wasn't here to... 
Oh, uh, that reminds me. Robert was back again for another commission. This time he wants a pair of fang earrings and a brass gorget made. And not just by any goldsmith, mind you. He specifically requests the artisan who crafted the copper rings. That's you, Cecilia. You must be really impressed by your work. When the accessories are ready, pray present them for my inspection. I want to ensure that Robert's completely satisfied. Am I trying to pretend to be a goldsmith, or am I just use, or, or are you just using me to uh, make gifts for uh, your little uh, special special man? Impressive work, Cecil. You clearly have an affinity for brass. The fine touches on these, on the, on these earrings, in particular, are fangs, brass. This presents a dilemma. I should not like these items, but they feel fresh. Your numerous mistakes when taken, when taken together give me them an endearing quality. I, remind, I, I am reminded of serendipity. Her meager buzz, bosom and untoned buttocks are... GG! I'll have you know that my bosom is quite ample and my bottom is, is as firm as can be. I simply don't wear clothing that... Wait, this has nothing to do with anything. And I refuse to be a party to, to, be party to a debate over my own body parts. Huh. <laughs> Man, Gigi is, uh, he doesn't hold back. We were talking about the earrings and the gorgie you made, Cecilia. Both call for brass, which is more useful than you might, may realize. While it isn't the fanciest metal around, it can be made to resemble gold in, in appearance. It's shaped and polished well. And despite Gigi's comments, I believe you've done an excellent job. Robert will doubtless agree. Since he requested that you make these items, I suppose you should be the one to deliver them. He'll find them outside as before. Why don't you do it? There you go, Robert. Good to see you again, Cecily. Take the earring and the gorget are ready. Yes, they are. By the gods, the craftsmanship is, exqui is exquisite. This is great. This isn't great to be gear to be worn, but art to be admired. It is a little wonder that Serendipity was named Guildmaster at such a young age. She is a woman with incomparable talent and a rare and a rare beauty. Besides. What? It was you who crafted these? Well now, this is an unexpected development. I'll have to keep my eye on both you and your lovely guildmaster. My thanks, Tesla. You thought I was my handiwork? I don't know what to say. For a customer to mistake your work for mine speaks to your growth as a goldsmith. At the rate you're improving, I can only imagine what customers will be saying about you for years from now. I don't know. Tesla, oh god, you've seen it. You should have seen it. It was glorious. A gold brown apple tart, freshly baked by a Bismarck trained chef. I was saving it for an afternoon snack, but the moment I turned my back, that little terror ate it. Gigi ate it. How could a mammoth eat food? Mammoths can't even taste food. And then, and then he had a nerve to criticize my diet, saying it would lead to further deviation from conventional standards of beauty. Gods, I just. Man. Gigi, uh. He's, uh. He's pretty ruthless. Pardon my outburst. That's not why you're here. Keeping your skills sharp, I trust. You know, it occurs to me that the past two weeks I gave you a word of proper lessons. How about I teach you something new? What do you know about, my, 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 about materia? Wait, don't answer that. Even if you're familiar with it, it is my duty as a guildmaster to instruct you in its applications into our craft. So, let's review the basics. Materia, okay, I don't, don't need you to tell me how materia works. Here you go. The crystallized essence of past experience, so easily inherited. This is all rather silly. Would it not be more simple to attach materia to direct to self? Gigi would be glad to try inserting crystals into Greenhorn's skull. No, bad Gigi. That isn't that isn't how materia works. Oh, please don't misunderstand him, Cecil. I'm certain that he means well. Man, this guy, this guy, he, he really doesn't hold back. As for, he's very straightforward. As for your staff, it is very well made, and the material is per perfectly melted. Well, nicely done. Perhaps you're wondering who would prefer a staff with a head, with a headpiece of bone over, stud, over one studded with jewels. Well, the thaumaturges favor such equipment. The fangs and horns are the weapons of beasts used to kill and defend. Few materials are better suited than these for channeling the dark arts, or so I understand. I'm the furthest thing there is from a trained thaumaturge, but even I can sense the arcane magic residing within the staff. 
Anyway, I trust you've learned something about today about the importance of searching the markets about and about how to handle materia. I hope this knowledge will serve you well in your future endeavors. It will. Oh, Cecil, I was hoping that you would come by. You see, something's happened to Gigi. Recently, he started acting strangely. Ah, uh, even by his usual standards. Anyway, I believe I've determined the cause. It's quite complicated, but to put it simply, he's breaking down. I can repair the pot I can handle the repairs, but I need to count on you for something. I need you to make an ingot of silver. Not any ingot of silver, mind you, but a high quality one. It may seem daunting, but I have every confidence you can handle the task. Got it. This is perfect, Cecilia. I can fix Gigi with this, I'm sure of it. Silver ingot. Gah, forced to accept aid from Gent Greenhorn. So humiliating. Poor, poor Gigi. It's like a completely different person. Really? Seems like the same to me. What? Not that different from usually, you say? Well, it may seem that way to you, but I can assure you he's quite out of sorts. Anyway. Silver was historically prized for its beauty. Ancient peoples even believed it to possess magical properties. Although they did not completely understand the natural processes involved, they were in fact correct. It's difficult to explain to someone without an extensive background in the rel relevant fields, but let's just say that silver is really, really good at channeling ether. For this reason, silver is the material of choice for making the mammoth's dis precision, precision parts. Thankfully, the component responsible for Gigi's erratic behavior is within my ability to craft. But gods forbid that his core should ever, should ever be damaged. Of the core? It's like, well, it's everything that makes Gigi himself. His memories, his personality, his soul, really. When he was built over a century ago, he knew nothing. But by assisting Guildmaster after Guildmaster, he's come to possess more wisdom and experience than any living guild goldsmith. The, the, that knowledge and the gentle soul that carries it are our guild's greatest treasures. <laughs> I take it you didn't realize just how irreplaceable he is. Believe me, it's been a great a comfort having him around. And thanks to you, we continue to rely on, uh, rely on his counsel. Alright, more like his criticism. Cecil, something awful has happened! It's Gigi! Instead of behaving better, he's acting even worse! A Charlie Merchant was here not available to discuss a potential contract with us. In the midst of negotiations, Gigi commented on the man's jewelry, claiming such toddy baubles are beneath even a Lomincin whore. Unsurprisingly, the man became quite upset and stormed off. Our members understand that Gigi can be a harsh critic, but this foreign gentleman, Rorotan, was visiting us for the first time. I, if it were a guild member, we might have overlooked the incident, but he was a, he was a potential business partner. God, this is a disaster for the guild. We must make it up to him, Cecil. Can you help me? Before Gigi offended him, we were discussing a bulk order of Malachi earrings. By way of an apology, I'd like to give Rotan a pair of these. The finest we can craft. If the gods are good, you'll forgive us for the incident. You're one of, the, our, one of our best, so I'd like you to craft the earrings. When they're ready, pre please present them to me for inspection. Here you go. Such rich, vibrant greens. Even I couldn't have done a better job for, of cutting the stones. Despite being relatively commonplace, Malachite is quite sought after, owing to its supposed power to ward off evil. Pieces bearing swirls that resemble an eye are especially popular. Superstitions notwithstanding, it does indeed have some mild thaumaturgical properties. I must say, I think you've really outdone yourself, Cecilia. I pray that Rorotan will, do, will feel the same. As much as I'd like to apologize in person, I'm sure he wouldn't be willing to hear me out. I'm not sure he'd be willing to hear me out, so I'd like you to deliver the earrings. But before he left, Rorotan mentioned that he had other business to conduct at the Ruby Road Exchange. Chances are you'll find him there. What makes you think he's gonna talk to me? The Ruby Road Exchange. There. <laughs> hey, guy, got your earrings. There you go. 
Oh god, not a gold, not a guild goldsmith. Let me make myself clear. I just wanted to discuss a potential partnership. I don't know what I've done to offend your guildmaster and her assistant, but I don't. I understand that I'm no longer welcome. Now please leave me in peace. Really now, I don't want to hear it. Just leave me. But the twelve, I've never seen such fine craftsmanship. From Mr. Serendipity, I'm speechless. I never imagined the guildmaster would go so far as to personally craft. Wait, you are the one who crafted these? Not the fair guildmaster? Gods do indeed work in mysterious ways. I don't believe I have properly introduced myself. I'm Robotan, a traveling entrepreneur. I go wherever opportunity beckons, buying it for a guild and selling for two. Long have I have I, I have wandered this realm for such fine accessories, as well as talented goldsmiths to craft them. And you are precisely the sort of artist I endeavor to meet. I'll be honored if you allow me to purchase more of your finer merchandise. Permit me to sell your wares and we'll both be wealthy in no time. Ah, uh, but forgive my impetuous, impetuous. You're a guild goldsmith and I must go through the proper channels. Very well, I will meet with Mr. Serendipity once more. Please give my card to your guildmaster and inform her that I shall contact her again soon to resume contract negotiations. Well, that went well. Alright. We restored a reputation. Let's go deliver this. Gigi's malfunctioning. Goldsmith Guild. Welcome back, Cecil. While you were gone, I performed some basic maintenance on Gigi. I'm not sure if I fixed the problem or if there ever was a problem to begin with, but. Oh, but what about Roboton? Did you find him? This is wonderful news, Tesla. Not only is he forgiven us, but he decided to depict this partnership with even more than before. I knew I was worth a count on you, Tesla. There's something about your work that moves people, something that touches the soul. It's a gift, and it can't be taught as much as I wish it could. No, you've always had it in you, and as you grow more skilled, you'll become more better at expressing it. I'm certain that that was a part of Roboton's decision. Since we know you'll request your services when he next visits, you best work hard until the time comes. All right. I've been waiting for you, Cecila. Remember Roboton, the merchant from whom you made those exquisite earrings? He paid a visit not long ago, hoping to find you present. In fact, he was positively heartbroken that he couldn't speak with you in person. <laughs> it's hard to believe that he was so, once so furious with us. It's as if that unfortunate incident never happened at all. But returning to the manner at hand, Roboton has commissioned you to craft a firebrand, one of peerless quality, of course. When you're finished, I must insist I evaluate your work. It's not that I don't trust your craftsmanship, but Roboton is an important client, to say the least. That's understandable. Alright, Gigi, I know this is your first evaluation in a long while, but I'm sure you can handle it. Fire Bran. Burn, burn, make it burn them! Gigi is the one true Lord of Infernal. No, Gigi, no! What did I tell you? No fires! Perkies, please, please forgive me, so I might have knocked something loose when I performed maintenance earlier. You call yourself a maintenance an engineer? But I'm certain it's something important. Really? Other than the occasional outbursts, he's been relatively stable. Well, for Gigi, anyway. And, ah, yes, a scepter. I must say that you've once again done a marvelous job. I'm particularly impressed by how well you set the eye of fire in the scepter. This gemstone is the focal point of the design, both aesthetically and practically speaking. It is what allows the thaumaturgs to channel the ethereal energies within. And it's what transforms the peaceful common instrument of death into a stunning work of art. Any veteran thaumaturg would be doubtless be satisfied by both the quality and the efficacy of this firebrand. I just know Roboton will be happy to receive it. I say give him the gift that keeps, in, keeps on giving. Alright, Gigi, there would be absolutely no gift or no give, gift giving on my watch. Have I made myself clear? <laughs> okay, I thought I heard my phone ringing. You can leave the rest of me, Cecilia. I'll see that Roboton receives your firebrand and nothing else. I hope so. I don't want to be held responsible. Good to see you again. You'll be pleased to know that Gigi is completely back to normal. 
Why, when Roatan wasn't here not long ago, he only had to contend with Gigi's traditional repertoire of insults. You know what I mean, I'm sure. That Roatan was a hopeless fool, that he was completely devoid of artistic sensibilities, that he smelt of rolling berries, that sort of thing. Oh, don't get me wrong, it was terribly distressing, but at least there was no more talk of fires. Anyway, as for why Roatan was here in the first place, he wished to commission you once more. This time for a horn staff. It goes without saying that he desires a staff of the highest quality, so please bear that in mind before you present your work to me with inspection. There you go. Horn staff. Huh. So this is the Greenhorn staff. You're improving. Perhaps Greenhorn was finally outgrown her title. I must think of a more suitable one. Something that acknowledges your recent growth, but still conveys disdain for the majority of your work. Hmm. That's extremely high price. At least I think it is. But there's one thing I can say with certainty. This particular commission was made it, has made it even easier than usual to evaluate your growth. After all, the firebrand was you made before required you to work with many of the same materials. This is this is a perfect opportunity to see how your technique has improved since then. Although both were carved from algal horn and adorned with an eye of fire, I would say that this staff is much more refined by comparison. The wolf fangs flaring from the tip of the, are the coup de gras, not only strengthening the thaumaturgical properties of the weapon, but also improving the wheel, the abilities wep, the wielder's ability to cut an imposing figure. Why don't you deliver this commission to Roatan at the Ruby Road Exchange, personally? It's been a while since he's last met, so I'm sure he'd be happy to see you. Alright. Adventurous Guild! There you go, guy. Why, well, if it isn't Cecil, you're a hard woman to find. It's as it happens, I had another commission for you. Mr. Serendipity has the details. Or would you prefer that I tell you? I got it over here. You've already crafted the horn staff? Beg your pardon, I had no idea. I appreciate that you came to deliver it. I was dreading the inevitable encounter that, would, that with that irre irrepressible mammoth. Don't misunderstand. It's not that I'm offended. On the contrary, his assessment of my abilities is harsh but unfair. He reminds me I have much and more to learn more before I can call myself a connoisseur of the fine arts. And in times like these, ignorance can be a fatal fa failing. Especially if the rumors sweeping the markets are, are to be given in credence. Surely you've heard them as well. This talk of Jade of the Jade Fox. Aye, the legendary thief has come to Ulda at last. A master of disguise whose identity is, complete, is a complete mystery. There is but one thing on which everyone can agree. That his lust for fine jewelry is insatiable. So you must understand why a merchant like me would feel ill at ease. Yeah, there are no, there is, there are no, there is no greater enemy to the industrious business businessman than a dastardly thief who would steal his wares without, within, without com, 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 I don't know, something or other. You and your fellow goldsmiths should take care. In fact, it would not surprise me in the slides that the Jade Fox were turning his attention towards you. Yeah, I can see that happening, honestly. Welcome back, Cecil. I hope that staff was to Roboton's satisfaction. Congratulations on the job well done, then. Oh, but before I go, I've recently been informed that a dangerous thief has come to Ulda, and that we goldsmiths might be the target of, of his ma a machina- What? You've already heard the, about the Jade Fox? Well, now aren't we well informed? And anyway, I must urge you to be cautious when dealing with the new customers. The Jade Fox may disguise himself as one in an attempt to defraud you. As for the guild, rest assured that I will personally scrutinize anyone who seeks to commission our, our goldsmiths. I am a, and I am an excellent judge of character. What was that? Did you see you snicker, Cecila? And I thought you respected your kind and lovely guildmaster. Come lend a hand, Cecil. We have a mountain of commissions to fill. It's, it's because of the upcoming gala to celebrate the Sultana's name day. Everyone who's anyone has received an invitation. All of them intend to see, be seen wearing the finest garments and jewelry. Some of our um, more popular requests have been have been headwear. But, and that's where I like your help, especially. We need three ele electrum circlets of the highest uh, quality possible. One set with amber, one set with a, with spinal, 
and one set with Zircon. You can handle that, can't you? And if you're at all curious as to why I'm giving you this particular commission, it's from Rowaton, your biggest fan. He's acting as the middleman for many of our transactions, you see. I knew he was ambitious, but I never expected him to rise to prominence so quickly. He's become the talk of Old Dawn High Society, but with his impressive knowledge of the fine arts and his talent for obtaining anything his customers desire. Of course, what most are unaware is that his talents is largely dependent on yours. In case you've let, yet to realize it, it was your creations that have helped him build his reputation. You haven't let him down once, Cecil, so don't make this the first time. Be the first, be, be the best goldsmith you can be, and bring me the circus when they're ready. Got him. Electrum circlets. Hm, I'm not bored with flattery, Greenhorn. I will simply state what you, that you did well. If you'll not permit Gigi to fill your head with materia, then he'll not deign to fill it with praise, faint or otherwise. That's awfully petty of you. These circuits certainly deserve more than that. I take this one with set with, set with amber. Now, amber isn't a gemstone in the traditional sense since it's composed of fossilized resin and not a mineral. As a result, it requires different techniques to bring out its true potential. But you've managed to do just that, creating a piece of which is both pleasing into the eye and beneficial to the wearer. Especially one who wishes to, be, to more effectively channel his earth magics. In contrast to the natural vibrance of amber, zircon is a, is a circlet in parts... In this circlet in parts, a sense of wisdom and worldliness. Of course, it also improves one affinity with ice aspected ether. Now, uh, now that I think about it, zircon is not unlike ice, in that presence of impurities can radically alter its appearance. As for the circle set with spinal, I would say it strikes me as a symbol of confidence and power. Though may, perhaps I'm only saying that because I know that spinal is an elementally aspected to lightning. You brought out the best things in your materials and crafted three different yet equally magnificent circlets. I'll go so far as to say you've, uh, you've attained a level of skill rivaling that of our best guilds, goldsmiths. All I'll set for you is to head to the Ruby Road Exchange and deliver them to Roboton. Actually, I take that back. There's one more thing that you should be probably attend to. No shit. I must confess I'm somewhat jealous of the special attention in case you should be returning home. This is Robert. <clears throat> Oops, I skipped it. Jeez, geez, please, did you show some respect? I know you don't dislike Roboton, but this is far. This is too much. You must learn to treat our customers with respect. This kind of behavior is inexcusable. Don't concern yourself with me, with him, Cecil. I pray to give my regards to Roboton and Robert. All right. Cecil, there you are. I finally found you. I seen you helping Mistress Serendipity with some of the auras of the Sultan for the Sultana's name day celebration. I know you must be busy, so I'll get to the right to get to the point. Sultan sworn to have learned that the Jade Fox, a notorious thief, may be plotting to infiltrate the festivities and rob our distinguished guests. We will not allow this to happen, of course. However, the identity of the thief has yet to be determined. Therefore, we have decided to discreetly investigate several of our guests, including your patron Roatan. He has no ties to the 77 caravans or any other major trade organization. We can find no relatives and his activities prior to his arrival in the city are unknown. You have met with this so-called merchant several times and filled numerous commissions for him, have you not? Yet I wager he has shared little, if any, personal information. Can you honestly say that you know the man? I tell you this because if he is indeed the Jade Fox, I fear he may be a part of his plans. Do not turn your back on him, Cecila. Thanks for the advice, buddy. I'll keep that in mind. Greetings, uh -huh. Nessa. Always a pleasure to see you. Have you brought the circus I commissioned? They're particularly simple. They're spectacular. They're simply spectacular. The woman who wears it, where these mount works are of art, will be the toast that will die. I guarantee it. Huh. You're more quiet than usual, Cecilia. Is there something troubling you? Why did you really come to Ulda? Because I care so deep. I so deeply respect you as an artisan. I shall be perfectly honest. I confess I am not exactly the dedicated entrepreneur that I claim to be. In truth, I am a man besought by the trap, the trappings of the material world. I wander the realm in search of artistic masterpieces, not a businessman, but as an altruist. Some men covet and hoard their treasures, but I would sooner share mine with my fellow man. I'll go so far as to say that I consider this my sacred duty, which is why I'm absolutely thrilled to have discovered a talented goldsmith like you. 
as a purveyor of luxury goods, I couldn't have asked for a better supplier. Now I must insist that this conversation remain between us. In this city, in this city, it's unbecoming for a merchant to have any motive other than profit, you know. Oh man, I can't tell if it's if uh, if he's the Jade Fox or not. Time will tell, I guess. Welcome back, Cecil. I'd ask if Rowaton accepted your circles, but I have no reason to believe he didn't. By the way, I spoke with Robert after you left. He told me that this rumor with the Jade Fox might target the Sultana's name day celebration. It's terrible that the Rogue would even consider ruining a royal gala. God, what is the world coming to? I hope Robert catches the fiend personally and teaches him a lesson. Well, let's not dwell on that, shall we? A name day should be a happy occasion. I'm sure that everyone will turn, will turn out for the best. Well, let's hope. Oh, Cecila, good evening! Sorry, sorry, it's been a long... Wait, what day is it? I've been so busy on account of the Satan's Nanby celebration that I haven't had the time to get a good night's sleep. Or any sleep, for that matter. Don't worry about me, though. I'm fine, see? Perfectly awake. Perfectly fine. But seeing you here reminds me that I have an important commission for you. Rolotan wants you to craft a ring. A ring he intends to present to the Sultana herself. This is the sort of opportunity that comes but once in a lifetime. Your jewelry might be worn by her royal majesty, Na Nanamo Ulnamo. You see, at the celebration, all of the Sultana's gifts will be presented to her at once in a grand ceremony. Any guest whose, guest whose gift receives special recognition is assured of great fame and fortune. Rotan has was adamant that you would be the one to craft his craft his gift. He said he could only accept the work of Uldanal's premier goldsmith. After discussing the matter at length, he decided on the flawless black pearl ring as his, as his presence. Traditionally, he would like to be melted with material as a finishing touch. I suggest he use pi piety. There's, that will give the Sultana incentive to, to select it, though we don't want to do the impression that she needs it. So perhaps you should use an average grade, say, three. Give the importance of this commission. Uh, Robotan has agreed to pick it up in person, so I will contact him when you have prepared the ring. Got it. By the 12th, this is fabulous. I'll let Robotan know at once. It's more beautiful than I could ever imagine. The sh color, the shape, the luster. This is a ring fit for royalty. I knew I was, I was right to trust you, Sessa. This ring will surely meet with her grace's approval. Stop right there, Roatan. The most moment's far sends now. What's going on? Huh? What's the meaning of this? You think you're clever, do you? I've seen through your lies and I know who you really are. The Jade Fox. The Jade Fox? Roatan, is this true? Have you been deceiving us all this time? I'm afraid so, my dear. But it's over now, and not a moment too soon. This charlatan was planning to rob the guests at the name day celebration. Maybe, maybe even the Sultana herself. That's ridiculous. I don't have to listen to these wild accusations. Cecil, I'm afraid I must ask you to give me that ring, as it is evidence of, the, of his crimes. It will be returned to you once his trial is complete. You don't believe him, do you, Cecilia? I'm innocent, I tell you. Innocent! We'll see how long that you can maintain this facade, the facade once I put you in a cell. I'm taking you to Captain Jenlin's. Or Captain Jen. Secrets and lies! Secrets and lies! He takes you to death and sorrow to Pearl Lane. I still can't believe that Rosen was a Jade Fox. Can you, Gigi? 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 Where are you? He gasps. says, I think he might have run off on his own. I heard him muttering about something about Pearl Lane. You should try searching for him there first. Uh oh. So Robert must be the Jade Fox. The Deceiver! Isn't it like against the law to impersonate an official? No? Okay. Uh-oh. Secrets and lies, secrets and lies. Back away from the law, fell you cur.
Well, if it isn't the mammoth, you're an awfully long way from home. Gigi, what are you doing here? Why'd you run away? Deceiver! Trickster! This man is no salt and sworn. What? What are you saying? Robert is a Jake Fox, Mrs. Mr. Serendipity. Listen to your assistant. You know it to be true. Robert, tell me it isn't so. Tell me this is all a misunderstanding. Oh. Everyone, take everyone take a deep breath and calm down. There's no reason this needs to end in bloodshed. My God, it's true. You really are the Jade Fox, aren't you? You're even, you're, you're even overdeveloped sense of justice, little one. It's going to get you a little trouble. It's going to get you a little, into a little trouble someday. As for you and me, my dear Serendipity, I think we are all pa well past the point of our introductions. Believe me when I say that I'm just as disappointed as you are. I'd hoped we would have become more intimately acquainted before this identity outlived its usefulness. Alas, I could not bear to forsake an opportunity of this magnitude, one that Roboton here was kind enough to provide. Bah! Metal some contraption? You son of a- No, I got, got head-butted. <laughs> what the fuck? GG! Serendipity I Ugh. He's malfunctioning! He's broke. He borked. GG, no! It's convulsing. You can fix him, can't you? He saved my life. Do you need money for parts? I'll pay you anything. You can even sell the ring I commissioned. It's not a matter of money. I I think his corpse might be irre irreparably damaged. It was made over a hundred years ago with techniques that have long since been forgotten. If it has failed, then he is forever lost to us. I detest that ridiculous hairstyle. You must. Oh no, my mammoths! Cecil, what are you doing with that ring? Wait, what? You can't seriously be suggesting that. Black Pro Ring. Yeah, this is by far the worst piece of greenhorn has ever crafted. Its very existence offends me. If you violate it, so violate it. Jeez, you've come back to us. It's a miracle. Well, I, guess it's, uh, I guess that's about as much as a happy ending as we're going to get, right? I still can't believe what's happened. First, I thought Roatan was a Jade Fox, and it turned out it was Robert. Gigi must have sensed something strange about him before. I can't help but think back on all those times he ranted about secrets and lies. It seemed he was talk speaking of Roatan, but now I realize he meant Robert. Oh, if I had only listened more closely to his words. That man made me have made a fool out of me with his dashing good looks, his piercing gaze, his broad shoulders. But we got him, Cecilia. I'll never ever again terrorize the good- You'll never again terrorize the good people of Volda. I'm sure you're worried about Gigi. Allow me to put your fears to rest. In spite of your reckless attempt to repair him, there was no permanent damage. Indeed, you, when you have began fumbling around with his components and attempted to shove that ring inside him, I was t absolutely terrified. Thankfully, though, she, through sheer strength of will, Gigi overcame his injuries, and it's all thanks to your ring. In Gigi's eyes, your ring was very poor, was poorly, was so poorly wrought that it filled him with an overwhelming disgust. You reminded him of his purpose of creating by creating focus of, for his great disdain. 
grand disdain, and in doing so, you helped him regain his senses. Isn't that wonderful, Cecil? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, but that's all I wanted to tell you. When I was examining Gigi earlier, I discovered something extraordinary. You see, he's by far the oldest man we have ever we have we have, we have here, having been constructed by one of our former guildmasters over a century ago. In fact, under the 19th guildmaster, he has assisted, according to records. But what our records didn't contain that, that was his original name was so faintly inscribed upon his core that he would not know us until now. Gigi is Menjing. Men Nejing. I'm just calling him Nejing. Cecil, the first man ever built, and the man whose design on which all others are based. Of course, I have no intention of telling him. The knowledge would make him insufferably arrogant. Anyway, Cecil, please, ac please accept my sincerest thanks. And though Gigi wouldn't lo be low to admit it, I'm sure deep down he's agreeable to you as well. Oh, in the future, please don't attempt to repair a mammoth until you have at least learned the basics of their construction. <laughs> oh, goody goody. Alright. And that is the end of the level uh, 10 through 50 job quests. Oh, I'm a little higher too compared to all the other crafters. But uh, yeah, we got a little bit of a head start. Oh Lord. So uh, that's going to be for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next part. Later.